welcome to this video on material for our Spring 2020 Calc 1 class, Math 1431 at U of H. This material is all about a topic called differentials. And uh, if your journey through math happens to last a lot longer, you, end up, you might end up studying this concept in a much more general setting years down the road. But this will give you a sort of starting off point and for those of us who might not be taking more math courses, or at least that many more math courses in the future, thankfully this topic is actually, as far as we're concerned, the way we'll talk about it, this is actually an old topic. This is a new name for something that we were talking about, that we, this is a new name for a concept we had called or referred to using the linear approximation or the linearization of a function. Or really, these concepts are really just talking about a tangent line. And so this concept of what's called a differential, it's a new way to notate and in some problems think about this linear approximation tangent line stuff we've already been talking about. Okay, so here's the idea, right? We know that the derivative of a function, f prime of x, is given by this limit formula, this limit of slopes. So the derivative at a point x is this limit, as h goes to zero, of a change in y values divided by a change in x values. And so what this limit is saying, right, it's saying as h becomes very small, f prime of x, this desired tangent line slope, becomes closer and closer to this fraction, this actual slope. And that's what's being said in this next sentence. It says, okay, so when h is really, really small, maybe it's like negative 0 0.001, or maybe it's 0.1, something relatively small, then it makes sense to say this number, f prime of x, is starting to look like is almost equal. It's like a drunken equal sign. It's pretty much equal to this fraction. And if you rearrange the terms in this fraction, if we multiply everything through by that denominator h, then we get this lovely equation. f prime of x times that small change of x is approximately the change in y values. What this is really saying, right, um, is we can approximate these change in y values by this term over here, the derivative times a change in x values. In fact, if we move one of the y values to the other side, we get this equation. And one way to think about this, the first term on the left here, f of x plus h, if h is a small positive number, you might think of that as like a future y value, right? So we move the f of x y value to the other side, and now we might say a future y value is approximately an old y value, that's this one, plus the rate of change of the function times a small interval length over which it's changing. And this is the part that really makes this feel like a line, right? We're really saying a future y value is an initial y value. So you might say it's like y, a future y value, is an initial y value plus a slope times a change in x values. So you can really make this connection to our tangent line very clear and explicit, but for the purposes of uh, this topic, we don't have to think about tangent lines. We're just going to think about um, every piece in this in this highlighted equation or circled equation that I'm now removing markings from. So this equation, which I will now highlight, this guy right here, 
it gives us a way of understanding future y values or nearby y values in terms of old y values and this derivative times a change in x values and it's this derivative times a change in x values this term right here that we give a new name to we call this the differential of f at x and we say okay and it's got this h thing we say with increment h Okay, so let's, let's sort of see how these words will get used in a pretty typical example. I actually think example one here is a great one to focus on, right? Because all the words I've been saying probably don't make too much sense until we actually try something. And this one is set up to walk us through really nicely. Okay, so we're given a function. Um, we're not told what the function is, but we're told that it's derivative f prime of x is this formula x cubed plus 5 all to the 1 fifth power. We're also told that the original function has the output 2 when we plug in the number 3. And we want to use all this information to set up some differentials so that we can estimate a close by y value, the y value when x is 3.2. Okay, so here is the thing we want to remember. This really is the thing you're going to want to remember, especially um, for like any upcoming or remaining exams for our class. The formula is this. f of x plus h is approximately f of x plus this differential with increment h. Okay, so let's answer these questions. What is it that we want to compute? We want to approximate the best we can, f of 3.2. Okay, and so we can sort of use these guiding questions to figure out how we're going to use this differential equation up above to maybe get an answer to this question. So this is what we want to approximate, and a sort of related question that maybe I'll write below is what nearby y values do we know? So we want to figure out or estimate the y value f of 3.2, but do we know any y values that are that should be pretty close to x equals 3.2? And usually like we would hope that well x equals 3 should be close, so hopefully we know the y value f of 3 and they did tell us that. They did tell us that f of 3 was 2. And this tells us, okay, so we want to know f of 3.2. We know the nearby y value, f of 3. And now that sets up, um, naming that stuff sets up how we're going to use the notation moving forward. We have, okay, we know that we want to approximate f of x plus h. That is, we want to approximate f of 3.2. We know f of 3, so maybe I should say x equals 3. That's the nearby x input, I know. Which would mean, so that answered this question, which would mean h would have to be 3 plus something to get me to, to, to 3.2. So, um, Sorry, I set that up wrong. I have 3 plus h has to get me to 3.2. So h has to be 0.2. So all of this is to say, okay, to approximate f of 3.2, well, that should be approximately equal to f of 3 and I know that, they told me that number, plus f prime at 3 times h, which I just figured out was 0 0.2. So for this problem, we were told f of 3 is 2, and we were given a formula to figure out f prime of 3. If I scroll up, my formula for f prime is up here at the top, now I'm now underlining in red. 
So I've got to plug 3 into that. So 3 cubed plus 5. So 3 cubed plus 5. Uh, that'll be 27 plus 5 is 32. All to the 1 fifth. And then times 2 over 10, or 0 0.2. And it turns out this problem was set up. You can, if you need to, I guess use a calculator here, but it turns out the fifth root of 32 is not too bad. That's going to be 2 plus the fifth root of 32 is actually 2. And so when I plug this in, I'll get 2 plus 4 over 10. And now I can make that fraction look like 2 plus 2 over 5. And if I want to keep it a fraction, oh, I can say that that's 12 over 5. Okay, so that was sort of a strange example, maybe, but I just want to point out, I want to review the main parts that make that work. The main parts that make this work is, one, we have a function that we can differentiate. That's where all of our old calculus is coming in. Two, we can evaluate the function at a nearby point and we can evaluate its derivative at a nearby point. Provided we can do that, then we can figure out f of x plus h by setting up, well, f of x, that should be nearby, plus f prime of x, that's f prime of our nearby point, times h. So this is a pretty typical way these problems will work. We'll give you a function, or at least its derivative, and we'll ask you to use its value at a nearby point to predict a future or nearby value. Okay, let's try that again uh, with number two. This is a really good one. Um, and so let's see. So for example, two here, what we want to think of, first, they didn't even tell us a function. It's our job to figure out a function. All we're told is we want to approximate the cube root of 25. So, of course, you could go pull out your calculator, right? And tell it to tell you the cube root of 25, and your calculator gives you an approximate decimal. The point here isn't to get that answer. The point is here is to use calculus to get your own approximate value of this. Okay, so here we've got to think about what function are we going to use to answer this question. You might want to hit pause and think about what would you call f of x in this problem, and then resume the video once you've struggled enough with it or think you have an answer. I think it's natural for this problem to use f of x equals the cube root of x, which I prefer to write as the power x to the one-third. Okay, we'd like to know, we want to know f of 25. But again, without quote-unquote cheating or just go ahead and using a calculator, right, we really don't know how to do that. So our next task is to say, um, is there a nearby x value that we can plug in? Um, that we can plug in. That's the key here. All right? And so you want to think, do I know what the cube root of 25 is without using some software? Probably not. My gosh, hopefully not. But are there any numbers that you think are close to 25 whose cube root you can take? If you can decide on that sort of number, that's going to be your obvious choice for a nearby x value. So again, you might want to hit pause, let yourself think about it, but hopefully you've now arrived at a good nearby number, which is x equals 27. Is that exactly 25? No, it's two away from 25. So 25 is, of course, 27 plus 2, and so that now tells us what h is. h is the amount we're moving x away 
from our EZ value. So we pretty much have everything we want here. The way, um, oh, sorry, I, I think I set this one up wrong. Let me, let me, uh, 25 is, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I said that wrong. So 25 is 27, not plus two, but minus two. So what this tells us is H is negative two. So what are we really saying here? What we're really saying is that what we're after, f of 25, should approximately be f of something quote unquote easy that we know how to evaluate plus f prime of that hopefully easy to evaluate number times whatever our value for h had to be. And in this case, that would be negative two. Right, the formula that I'm using here is that f of x plus h is approximately f of x plus f prime of x all times the value of h. Okay, so once we've set this problem up, we can sort of keep going and we can say, all right, f of 25 is approximately, well, first let me figure out what f of 27 is. So f of 27, the cube root of 27, we picked it so that we could do this. That's just three. And now I've got to compute f prime of x. That's finally where some calculus is really coming into the setup. I get a one-third x to the negative two-thirds, also known as one over three, the cube root of x squared. So f prime of 27 will be one over three. Now the cube root of 27 is three, and then I'm gonna square that. So when it's all said and done, I get that that's one over. 27. So finally, my answer over here, all of this becomes f of 25 is approximately f of 27, which we said was 3, plus 1 over 27 times a negative 2. And so we would get something like 3 minus 2. 227 there's probably a number of ways we could rewrite this but for the purposes of having space on these notes I'm gonna leave my answer like that okay example three um, before we do example three let's maybe pause here and do a popper question so popper question one Let's use differentials to approximate um, the value of sine of 0.1. So the sine of 0.1 radians. All right, um, let me generate some answer choices for you guys to think about here. Uh, but this should be okay. So maybe answer choice A will be 0 0.1 and maybe answer choice B o, will be 0 and answer choice C. Let's see if I can come up with some good choices. Maybe this will be the right answer, but probably not. Let's see. 
yeah, maybe it'll be one. D, maybe root two over two. And E will be none of the above. So I am going to, unfortunately, have to erase this question to make room to do example three. So if you're doing some poppers right now, you definitely want to pause to keep this on the screen. Um, I will point out, though, that right probably for this thing, the function you want to use is probably sine of x. Hopefully that's clear. And we need to pick an x value that's really close to 0.1. We probably want to use x equals 0 and h equals 0 0.1. That's probably enough ingredients to figure out what the correct answer to this popper question is. Okay, so let me erase some of this stuff. So you might want to hit pause now. And let's see, let's keep going. Okay, so for example three, we're told, okay, suppose you already have a good approximation for the natural log of two. Someone says, hey, that's approximately 0.69. Now we wanna use that information and differentials to estimate the natural log of 2.2. All right, so I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quickly, but I, hopefully you can follow. And again, you might wanna to pause to see if you can anticipate how I'm gonna set it up. So what I would say is f of x is the function natural log x. Because I want to approximate f of 2.2, I want to use a nearby x number to approximate that y value. I'm going to use x equals 2 so that my h value is 0.2. Then to set this all up so the differentials will work, I also need to remember how to take a derivative of the natural log function. And what I'll point out here, let's pause and do a second popper question. What is the derivative of the natural log function? Is it a, e to the x? Is it b, um, 2 to the x times natural log 2. Is it c, 1 over natural log 2 times 1 over x? Or is the answer d, 1 over x? We certainly need to know how to answer this proper question to finish example 3. Okay, so going to erase that popper question so I can finish example three. All right, so it turns out, as I'm sure you all got right on that little popper question, the derivative of natural log x is, of course, 1 over x. So finally, we can use differentials to say f of 2.2 that's f of x plus h is approximately almost equal to f of 2 plus the slope at 2 times that h value, the change in x values from 2.2 to 2, so 0 0.2. All right, so f of 2, that's the natural log of 2 f prime of 2, we figured out that out, that's 1 over 2, and 0.2 is 2 over 10. And they told us that the natural log of 2 is approximately 0.69, so this is 0.69 plus 1 over 10, and what I get here is 0.69 plus 1 tenth is 0.1, so it's approximately 0.79. So all of this, we just used a little bit of calculus and then some algebra to figure out that the natural log of 2.2 is approximately 
2.79. In fact, if you go and take out a calculator or type into Google natural log of 2.2, you'll see a decimal that starts 0.79 or something very close to it. All right, so example four is another good one to set up and do. Um, this one, we want to figure out the cosine of 58 degrees. So for this one, hopefully we're all thinking, well, the f of x I'm going to use is clearly going to be cosine x. And I love differentiating cosine x. That's just negative sine x. Now, I don't really know what 58 degrees is. But something near 58 degrees that I could use for my x input that I can take the sine and cosine of is 60 degrees. And the only difference you want to think about here is really when we talk about sines and cosine in this class, just like we did in pre-calculus, um, you know, especially when we're talking about their derivatives, we're always using radians, right? You'll notice when we've been talking about sines and cosines and tangents and their inverses, we very rarely, if ever, have used degrees in this class. So we're always using radians, so we need to convert degrees into radians. This is pi over 3 radians. Our x plus h, the actual input value we want to plug in, is 58 degrees. So we need to figure out... Um, uh, what h is, h is negative 2 degrees, but we need to write that in radians. Well, to convert to radians, um, I am just going to do my degrees divided by 180 and all times pi. That's how we convert to, de sorry, from degrees. So this should be negative pi over 90. All right, so how are we going to use differentials um, to, compute, to approximate the cosine of 58 degrees? Well, I would say f of 58 degrees, that is approximately equal to f of 60 degrees plus f prime of 60 degrees all times h, which we just figured out was negative pi over 90. And so now we just have to plug this in and remember, well, the cosine of 60 degrees, the cosine of uh, pi over 3 is 1 half. The derivative of the cosine is negative sine, so we'll get negative um, square root of 3 over 2. And then we have another negative negative pi over 90. And so our answer so far looks like 1 half plus pi root 3 over 180. Now probably what we would do is write that as a decimal. Um, usually when people use differentials, it's in a setting where you want to estimate something, and so everything's being estimated with decimals. But for me, right now, I'm going to leave my answer there, because what's more important is that you know how to set this up, whether or not you want your final answer to be a decimal. All right. I think our last example is number five, so let me squeeze in um, a quick popper question, popper question three. Um, it says, wait, if we end up using calculators to write our final answers as decimals. Shouldn't we just use the calculators to estimate our y value f of x plus h at the start. And let's say answer choice A is, well, yeah. And uh, 
I don't know if I'll put any other answer choices. Okay. All right. So let me let me uh, uh, get rid of all all that lovely popper question three, and we'll try an example. Let's see if that'll work. Oop, that's not working. All right. So I guess I'll have to erase this with my eraser. All right. So as I'm erasing, I will read through example five. It says, the total cost incurred in operating a certain type of truck. Oops, sorry. Oh, I didn't know that happened. Okay, I don't know what happened. Copying and moving some stuff. Um, in operating a certain type of truck on a 500 mile trip, traveling at an average speed of V miles per hour, is estimated to be this function of velocity. Okay, let's see if I can... That's bizarre. All right. My screen was acting up, but I think it's... Okay. Popper 3 is erased. Um, the total cost incurred in operating uh, this vehicle at an average uh, speed of v miles per hour is this function s cost of velocity or average velocity is 125 plus v plus 4500 divided by v dollars and it says find the approximate change in total operating cost when the average speed is increased from 55 to 58 so in all our previous examples, right, let me write something that I'll also try to erase quickly, we've been wanting to approximate a particular y value, right, by using a previous y value plus the derivative at that previous y value times a change in x values. But again, um, if I subtract this, this previous y value from both sides of this approximate equation, what I end up with is what I mentioned before, the change in y values is approximated by just the differential alone. So because this question is asking us to approximate a change in total outputs, we just want to use this boxed thing. That is, we just want to compute, in the language of this problem, the derivative at a good velocity value um, times this increment h. Okay, so we just have to think about this. We have to think about, well, what are we going to call c of v plus h, and what are we going to call c of v? And it turns out not to matter. You'll get the same answer here. So if you pick for v plus h, which seems pretty natural to set that equal to 58, right? Um, and then my original v is 55, right? I'm changing from 55, c of 55 to c of 58. So this tells me h is 3. Had you set it up the other way, you would get that h is negative 3. Okay. Um, so, what is uh, C prime? Well, that's like the calculus part. What's the derivative of this function? Well, the derivative of 125, I'm looking up here in this boxed red thing. The derivative of 125 is 0. The derivative of V is 1. And then I really do a chain, uh, sorry, a, a quotient rule or a power rule to get the derivative of that term. And so if I plug in 55 for v, I will get that this is 1 minus 4,500, all divided um, by this number, 55, uh, so, sorry, 55 squared, which turns out to be 3,025. And if I uh, simplify that, I will get that this is... 1475 all divided 
by 3025. So the approximate change is the derivative at this point, which we just computed. So this bizarre fraction, 1475 divided by 3025 times the little increment value h, so times 3. And this, if I want to get a decimal from this, let's see, that'll be a calculator. Uh, 1.4628. So that's about how much the total cost changes. If you increase your average velocity from 55 miles per hour to 58 miles per hour. All right, let me add in an extra thing here. Let's see. All right. Maybe we'll make this last, try this one, a popper question. Um, and I'll just help you set it up as a, using popper questions. So popper question four will be for this question, um, what should you probably use for f of x for this try this one? So let me read this. The question I'm referencing here says, try this one. Use differentials to approximate the value of 31 to the 2 fifths power. And so what's a good choice um, for the function you should use to set this up using differentials? Is it option A, 31? Is it option B, um, 30? one to the x, is it option c, x to the two-fifths, is it option d, oh, I don't know, um, x squared, or is it option e, x uh, to the fifth. All right, and then for proper question five, let's just keep focusing on this try this one question. Um, we want to approximate the output uh, at 31. So we need a nearby x value. So what should x equal? Right, x is, I want a number x that's near the desired input, 31, but I also want f of x to be computable in a relatively easy way. So that's sort of your guidelines. How do I pick a number? Maybe you're thinking, oh, I don't know, 30 is pretty close to 31, but can I plug 30 into my function from popper question four and compute f of 30 really easily? Something like that. So in fact, what are some good answer choices here? Maybe one answer choice you would say is, oh, maybe I should use x equals 32. That's pretty close to 31, and I know how to compute f of that. Maybe, like I said, you should try x equals 30. Maybe another choice would be um, x equals 31.07. 6542. Maybe choice D would be x equals 1, and maybe choice E would be none of the above. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you're doing well. Um, I will talk to you guys in another video soon. Thanks.